Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are going to be thinking about remainders and what they mean uh, when it comes to our division problems. We are in our math journals on pages 209 and 210. The title of this activity is Interpreting Remainders. It's in Unit 6, uh, Lesson 8, and uh, it's Volume 2 of our math journals. So, it says here, for each number story, draw a picture, write a number model with a letter for the unknown, use a division algorithm to solve the problem, and then it says, decide what to do about the remainder. And then record your answer and write a number model with the answer. Okay? So that question, decide what to do about the remainder, goes back to what type of number story problem you're being asked to solve. So here is an example that you can use. Okay, Let's say you're one of these three um, weird-looking uh, clip art children here, and you want a cookie. And you have seven cookies to uh, divide amongst the three of you. Well, you can probably already see where this is going. If I have seven cookies, right? To be divided amongst three kids, you are going to have something left over. Because if I divide seven by three, the best I can do is two cookies for each child, because two times three is six, and when I subtract the difference, I'm left with one. As you can see, when I draw groups, here's a group of two, here's a group of two, Here's a group of two, and then I have one left over. So each child gets two cookies, but there's one left over. So the question becomes, what do I do about that leftover cookie? Well, I could throw it away because it wouldn't be fair for someone to get more than two cookies, or I could stick that cookie back into its package, put it in the cabinet to be eaten another day. Okay? That's what we mean when we decide about remainders. What is the practical application of what is left over? Okay, So let's take a look at a couple of problems here where we have to decide what to do with what's left over. So as you can see in the title, whatever we do is going to involve division that has a leftover, a remainder. So let's take a look at number one. Jackson is buying balloons for a party. Balloons cost $6 per bunch. How many bunches can he buy with $75? Okay. So our number model is going to be $75 divided into groups of 6 because it's $6. And we need an unknown, let's say B for bunches. Okay. So we need to divide 75 into six groups. Now I can create an array pretty easily with 75, um, so that's going to take a lot of little dots. So with the magic of digital editing, I'm just going to inject an array of 75 dots, like so. Isn't technology cool? So now what I need to do is I need to group these 75 dots that represent dollars into groups of six. So you would say take my highlighting tool like so and I could group six dots like that. And do another one like that. And of course it's going to take me a while to uh, group uh, six dots into different groups. So let's just skip ahead, shall we? So again, with the magic of editing, I have now uh, grouped dots that represent dollars into groups of six. And as you can see, at the top half of this array, or top portion, there are uh, seven rows of ten, and the first six rows of ten have been grouped into columns of six, and that's because six times ten gives me sixty. And then down here I've got two more groups of six that were cut out uh, uh, more uh, unequally. So two groups times six is going to give me 12. And then I've got these two, or I'm sorry, three dots left over down at the bottom. Okay? So let's take a look at 
our remainder. So if I divide 75 into groups of 6, I'm going to have a total of 12 groups, or 12 bunches of balloons. So let me rewrite this number sentence, shall we? So I need to divide $75 into groups of 6, and I can get 12 bunches with $3 left over. So the question then becomes, what do I do with those $3? My choices are I can ignore them, I can report it as a fraction, or I can round the answer up. Okay. Well, in this case, if I'm buying something and if I don't have enough money to make a purchase, I'm out of luck. So what I need to do here is I need to ignore the fact that I have three extra dollars and uh, just stick it back in my pocket. Okay. I'm not going to report it as a fraction of a bunch of balloons because I can't buy part of a bunch. And I can't round my answer up because, I, again, I don't have enough money to make the purchase. Okay. So why do I... Ignore the $3 remainder. We could say something like the $3 isn't enough for another bunch of balloons. And that is what we mean by deciding or interpreting the remainders. What do we do? Okay, let's take a look at the second problem. Rosa is buying boxes to hold all 128 of her DVDs. Each box holds five DVDs. How many boxes are needed to store all of her DVDs? Now, 128 DVDs makes for a very large array. I don't want to draw 128 dots and group them that way. So there's another approach I can take. So I'm going to uh, think about base 10 blocks and the way that we model them. So when I have... 128 of something, I could represent that as a raft of 100, two rods of 10, and then eight ones. So this is 128. Okay? So I know that in 128, I have one group of 100. Right? And 100 is the same as saying 20 times 5. Right? Because 20 times 5 gives me 100. So I know I have at least 20 groups of 5 DVDs in this amount. And then with uh, my two tens, I know that two tens for 20 is the same as saying 4 groups of 5, because 4 times 5 is 20. Then I'm left with uh, these eight ones, okay? And in this area, with my eight dots, I can create a group of five by just circling five dots, like so, okay? So I know I can get at least one more group of five. Eight take away five leaves me with three, so that means I can get one more group of five. So when I create my number model, it's going to look something like this, 128 DVDs divided into groups of five, which is five per box, is going to give me blank number of boxes. Okay? So how many boxes do I need? Well, I need 20 boxes for my 100 DVDs. I need four boxes for my 20 DVDs. And then I'm going to need two boxes. Because when I have eight leftover DVDs and I want to put them all in boxes, I can fit five into one box, but then I have three left over that also need a box. So I need two more boxes to hold my eight C uh, DVDs right here. So I've got 20 and four and two which is a total of 26 boxes. So let's write that number model again. I need to divide 128 DVDs into groups of five. 
I'm going to be able to get 25 groups, and then I'm going to have a remainder of 3. Okay, Let's show the actual computation. 128 divided by 5. If I do long division, 5 goes into 1 0 times. So 0 times 5 is 0. Subtract, bring down, check to see that my leftover is bigger than my divisor. So I repeat. I can divide 12 into 2 groups of 5 because 2 times 5 is 10. Subtract the difference. Bring down the 8. 28 is bigger than my divisor, so I'm going to repeat again. How many groups of 5 can I get out of 28? Well, I can get 5 groups because 5 times 5 is 20. Five, I subtract the difference, and I'm left with a remainder of 3. So this remainder represents the extra DVDs that do not fit into a full box. 25 remainder 3. Okay. So what do I do about the remainder here? Well, because I need another box for my three loose DVDs, I'm going to round the answer up. Why? Because all the DVDs need to go in a box. If you've ever been involved in a move, like say you move from one house to another house or from an apartment to a house or whatever, you will know that everything you want to take with you has to go. And sometimes, especially at the end of the packing, prior to the move, you've got a lot of loose stuff laying around your house, your apartment, your home, wherever, and it needs to go into a box. It may not fill a full box, but you got to take it, right? So you're not going to just leave stuff around because it didn't fit into a box completely. Okay, so in this case, we're going to have 26 DVD boxes, and if uh, Rosa wants to uh, buy two more DVDs to you know, fill out her collection, she's got room to spare. And that's what we mean by interpreting remainders. We need to figure out what to do with the leftovers. Sometimes we just uh, put it aside like we did with the money here, or with the cookies. Sometimes we have to round up to the next uh, full number for our quotient because having leftovers becomes a problem, okay? So try these division problems. You're going to get a remainder, and then you just have to ask yourself, well, what should I do with the leftovers, okay? It all goes back to what type of number story is connected to this division problem. All math. No matter what calculation or operation you're doing, whether you're looking at angles or whether you're multiplying or whether you're adding, all math is tied to some sort of number story. We only do math in real life to solve real world problems, like how many boxes do I need for my DVDs? Okay? So you gotta think about the story behind the algorithm. Questions? A little confused? Well, if you are, you need to talk to your math teacher. They will be happy to help you, guide you through this process. They can tell you, hey, this is what I would do with this remainder if I were you. So if you have questions, you need to ask. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it uh, steers you in the right direction for interpreting remainders. And until we speak again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.